This module focuses on the 80s and 90s. Let us begin by reviewing the historical background of this period. In Europe, progress continued towards the European Union. The Middle East Gulf War, the economic influences of Japan, and in the United States, political and economic developments, energy and environmental issues, the changing American family, changes in the role of women, the computer revolution, the new immigrants, and AIDS. During this period, fashion industry underwent major changes. Style tribes proliferated. New romantics, goths, preppies, fashion fetish or pervs, grunge, hip-hop, break boys and fly girls, ravers, cyberpunks, emo, scene, manufacturers focus on market niches. The New Romantics were a young fashion movement in the 1970s in the UK. It was associated with the new wave scene that was around at the same time. The subculture was associated with brands such as Adam and the Ants and Duran Duran. They took fashion to the next level with their theatrical outfits, flamboyant, colourful, dramatic look with use of frills and luscious fabrics associated with historical periods. New Romanticism was a music and fashion movement of the 1980s and was a direct reaction against the punk movement. It first emerged in London nightclubs such as Blitz on Great Queen Street and soon moved to Barbarella's in Birmingham. People involved in New Romantic club nights wanted to protest against the anti-fashion ethos of punk and appear as flamboyant and frilly as possible. The look was everything for a new romantic and it involved wearing glitter, makeup and ostentatious clothing. The appeal of the new romantic scene proved so popular that it rapidly filtered into mainstream fashion. Designers linked with the new romantic period include Stevie Stewart and Colin Swift. Vivian Westwood is also often associated with Adam and the Ants, pirate and buccaneer look. This look was extremely popular with New Romantics and it included the wearing of frilled bell-sleeved shirts and blazers made of brocade and velvet. Valley Girl. This style included trends of leg warmers and mini skirts, especially the rara skirts, modeled after the short flared skirts worn by American cheerleaders. Leg warmers, which had long been the staple gear for professional dancers during rehearsals became a teen trend in 1981. Their popularity and that of sweatshirts with their collars cut open exploded following the 1983 release of Flashdance. Headbands became fashionable in 1981. The trend started in California and spread across the United States. Frequently, these mini skirts were worn with leggings. These styles are shown in today's fashion with stores such as American Apparel whose main look is solid colours and simple patterns and the same shapes and silhouettes of the 1980s. Graffiti may also express underlying social and political messages and a whole genre of artistic expression is based upon spray paint graffiti styles. Within hip-hop culture, Graffiti has evolved alongside hip-hop music, b-boying and other elements. There are many different types and styles of graffiti and it is a rapidly developing art form. Clothing inspired from graffiti art or street painting is graffiti clothing. Many shoes, bags, caps and tees with printed graffiti are being designed. It is very popular among the youth of day. Graffiti print is the in thing. Different bright and fluorescent colored prints with a black or dark colored base, even neutral colors are also used. Texts, cartoons, distorted drawings are the main subject of these prints. Power dressing. 
shoulder pads were in trend and remained popular throughout the 1980s. The reason behind the sudden popularity of shoulder pads for women in the 80s may be that women in the workplace were no longer unusual and wanted to power dress to show that they were equal of men at the office. Many women's outfits had Velcro on the inside of the shoulder where various sized shoulder pads could be attached. The Dynasty television show, watched by over 250 million viewers around the world in the 1980s, influenced the fashion styles in mainstream America and most of the Western world. The show, targeted towards females, influenced women to wear jewelry often to show one's economic status. Synthetic fabrics went out of style in the 1980s. Wool, cotton and silk returned to popularity for their perceived quality. The popularity of aerobics and dance-themed television shows and movies created a dance wear fashion sense. Professional dance wear, such as leggings and leg warmers, were worn as street wear. The 1983 film Flashdance popularized amongst women ripped sweatshirts that exposed one bare shoulder. Leotards were also worn during this period and became colorful. Other dancewear inspirations included Olivia Newton-John's physical video and Jane Fonda's line of aerobic videos. The post-punk 1980s was the gothic look back black clothing, often made of gabardine, leather or velvet trimmed in lace or fishnet material. Corsets were often worn by girls. British bands which inspired the gothic trend include The Cure, Sizuxi and the Banshees, and the cult. This trend would resurge in the 1990s and 2000s. Conservative teenagers, especially in the United States, wore a style that came to be known as preppy. An example of preppy attire would be a button-down Oxford cloth shirt, cuffed khakis and loafers. Also popular were argyle sweaters and vests. It was also considered preppy to wear a sweater tied loosely around the shoulders. In the 1980s, preppy fashions featured a lot of pastels and polo shirts with designer logos. Preppy fashions are associated with classic and conservative styles of dressing and clothing brands such as Izod, Lacoste, Brooks Brothers, Polo, Ralph Lauren and clothing from The Gap. Underwear became a more important fashion accessory for both men and women. Women's looks tended to be in a wide array of pastel colors with lacy trimmings. Camisoles with built-in bras became popular for women, especially visible in the neckline of jackets worn for work. Men became more fashion conscious as well. Underwear was also colorful for men and boxer sh shorts were tapered or styled after the side went running shorts with a trimmer cut. Postmodernism was a set of theories about nature of present-day society, a style of expression in the arts and certain cultural values and sensibilities. The main features were rejection of authority, casual wear for all occasions, cultural or ethnic groups with irreconcilable differences, juxtaposition of elements from different styles, use of symbols without reference to their traditional meanings. Haute couture as a source of inspiration has been replaced by luxury design, industrial fashion and street styles. Luxury fashion includes part of the haute couture and more of innovative and expensive ready to wear. This is not limited to Paris couture houses. American luxury is rarely made to measure. Trunk shows are held by designers for their wealthy clients who can try on the clothes and this interaction provides designers with insightful details about the client's needs and wants. Industrial fashion is fashion created by manufacturers which sell similar products to similar social groups in many countries. Examples of this are Ralph Lauren, Liz Clairbone and Tommy Hilfiger. Street styles are styles originated by urban subcultures or style tribes. Different styles have different publics. There are no precise rules about what is to be worn and no agreement about a fashion ideal that represents contemporary culture. 
Couture's influence waned in the 60s. It did not disappear, however. The 70s and 80s saw wealthy women from oil-producing countries buying couture. Economic prosperity of the 80s also saw acceptance of elaborate evening dresses. Couture did not compete with ready-to-wear. Instead, it focused on evening lines and suits. Most couturiers produced couture as well as ready-to-wear and makeup and perfume license. Large businesses conglomerates acquired fashion and couture houses. Global marketing helped make brands gain worldwide awareness. During this period, ready-to-wear became very popular in the USA. In France, Pret-a-Porter thrived, franchised boutiques sold ready-to-wear products in cities around the world. Manufacturers purchased licenses to use the couture names on items like handbags, jewelry and household items. Many firms opened in France for the attention French shows were given each year in Paris. Italy had a strong presence in fashion as well. British fashion diversified and unconventional and innovative styles, many derived from street fashion, once again appeared along with classics. Japan emerged as a major fashion center. Many of their designs were radically different and stimulated interest in worldwide press coverage. Ise Miyake, Yoji Yamamoto, and Rei Kawakubo, to name a few. This period also witnessed changes in the production and retailing of apparel. Computer technology cut costs for manufacturing apparel. Overseas manufacturing in third world countries created domestic unemployment and loss of GDP in America. To combat this economic depression, American apparel manufacturer exploited workers, often immigrants, in sweatshops with poor wages and working conditions. Merchandising also evolved during this time. Specialized boutiques came across towns and cities. Department stores started to organize merchandise according to designers. Off-price retailers, factory outlets and mail-order outlets. Vintage clothing and used clothing stores were first patronized by hippies and by people who sought out vintage clothing. Some customers valued the quality and workmanship of vintage clothing. An active overseas market for Levi's 501 hidden rivet jeans had developed in 1990s. By 2002, manufacturers were making replicas of vintage jeans. Television shopping networks, internet shopping caught on. Growing teens and tween markets, the market is fickle and capricious in their taste, followed celebrity music artists and sport figures for their fashion information prominence of labels and licensing logos. We now look at the origin of fashion trends. Retro fashions inspired from the past became an increasingly visible phenomena. Political and social elites such as Princess Diana, Duchess Ferguson, Nancy Reagan, Michelle Obama, Kate Middleton, etc. started fashion trends. Yuppie, which is short for young urban professional or young upward, upwardly mobile professional is a term that refers to a member of the upper middle class or upper class in the 20s or 30s. It first came into use in the early 1980s and largely faded from American popular culture in the late 1980s due to the 1987 stock market crash and the early 1990s recession. Yuppies are mocked for their conspicuous personal consumption and hunger for social status among their peer. They wore double-breasted power suits and owned the latest electronic gadgets. African-American style. These styles came from African-American inner-city youth and from rap musicians seen on MTV. They wore Adidas sneakers or high tops with laces untied, oversized t-shirts, huge gold earrings and chains. They originated the fade, a hairstyle in which hair was cut very short on one side and long on top and began to shave designs on names of, on their scalps. Public Enemy's Black is Back inspired African-inspired round flat-topped crown hats and leather medallions with maps of Africa. Kente cloth also became popular. 1990s 
bought black and white hip hop music fans who were wearing oversized baggy pants, matching football or baseball shirts, baseball caps worn backwards, leather knapsacks and running shoes. Dreadlocks were worn by Rastafarians, reggae musicians from Jamaica and others wanting to adopt these styles. A range of street styles influenced clothing, body piercing and tattooing, high fashion garments that look like tattoos. Jewelry worn in other parts of body came to be known as body jewelry. The persistence of blue jeans and the importance of denim. Washes and textures were innovated. Slashings and cutoffs were explored. Torn jeans became fashionable and a symbol of status. The events that affected the 90s. 9-11 affected fashion. Demand for clothing dropped sharply. Even the affluent chose a somber taste in evening wear. Clothing with American flags became popular to make a patriotic statement. Islamic traditions and clothing are seen as suspicious. As the US went into war, military influences appeared in civ civilian dress, cargo pants, trenches, battle jackets in camouflage prints. Media also a fashion influence. Music groups like Michael Jackson, Madonna, Annie Lennox, rock bands, now more recently Sean Combs, Sean John label, Jennifer Lopez, Fat Farm, Jay-Z, Rockaware, etc. In fine arts, Diana Reland retired as editor of Vogue magazine and joined the MET and showcased various exhibitions of costume art from different periods and cultures, often inspiring designers from these periods and influences. They were also demographic changes such as in casual wear, large and plus size stores. Fashion photographers promoted thin anorexic models in the 90s. It coincided with an increased use of hard drugs by celebrities and made heroin chic popular. Casual Fridays. High tech fabrics are waterproof fabrics which are breathable, have ultra fine microfibers, silicone finishes, polypropylene, dry fit and stretch fabrics. They have Teflon coating and are stain resistant. Chameleon fabrics uh, and clothing used with electronic devices. Examples are L LZR laser suit by Speedo, less drag and bonded seams. Examples of fashionable fabrics are cashmere, pashmina, voided velvet, brasso and animal prints. Sports and activewear. While interest in fitness continued to grow, high-tech footwear was introduced for walking, trekking, jogging, running and sports. Expensive sneakers became status symbols in inner city dwellings. High-heeled shoes with sneaker inspirations, designers began creating sportswear lines and jogging suits. During the period 1980 to 1995, Japanese influences were evident in the popularity of blacks and greys. Martin Margiela, a Belgian designer, became best known for deconstruction in clothing with seams located on the outside, linings that were part of the exterior or fabric edges left unhemmed and raw. These designs had an impact on mainstream fashion in subtle ways. Fashion for large shoulders and sleeves continued into the 1990s. Tightly fitting dresses were popular. They were made with midriff cutouts and sheer and lace fabrics. Frilly feminine underwear made a comeback. With more form-fitting clothing in fashion, underwear was designed with more support and shaping, like padded panties, rear risers or butt boosters. Special bras were designed to be worn under different kinds of necklines. Rayon fabrics returned to popularity in bright floral prints. While natural fibers were widely preferred, Lycra spandex was used extensively in blends. Fine polyester microfibers were made to look and feel like silk. Dress styles included shirt waists, dropped waist dresses, sweater dresses, t-shirt dresses, sweatshirt dresses and chemise or shift dresses, usually sleeveless and ranging from fitted to tent styles. A trend towards wearing unexpected contrasts with delicate sheer dresses with sturdy sandals or hiking boots became popular with young girls. Coordinated ensembles with dresses and coats of varying lengths were also popular. 
tailored suits were worn with tailored blouses for office or business wear. When skirts became shorter, women opted to wear pantsuits to work. By the late 80s, office wear became more diverse. The formal business jacket became softer and more cardigan-like. Giorgio Armani introduced the short suit as an alternative to skirt suit. Karl Lagerfeld revived the House of Chanel with imaginative updates to classic suit styles. Evening dresses had a great deal of glittering embroidery, sequin and beadings. Bright colors with vivid woven or printed designs. Christian Lacroix created a design named La Pouf. It had a wide, puffy skirt with a light, airy appearance. Another skirt style was called Mini Crinolins. Another style in the late 80s was the tightly fitted evening dress in strapless or thin strap details. Simple slip dresses of soft crepe fabrics were worn in the 90s. Lace or elaborate bustiers were also worn. Longer coats were replaced by short casual down coats. Both real and imitation fur was worn. Large oversized coats were worn over narrow dresses and suits in the early 80s. In the 90s, wrap coats and trench coats were popular. The idea of between-season coats was revived and popularized. Women's sportswear. Pants and skirts. Culottes were worn towards the end of the 80s. Tight fitting, stretch tights or leggings were of varying lengths were worn with large loose t-shirts, sweaters or under mini skirts. Pants were slender at the beginning of the 90s and then started to widen. Blouses, sweaters and other tops. Sweatshirts were a big fashion item. Norma Kamali created a line of clothes inspired by the knitted fabric used in sweatshirts and featured fanciful colors. The styles included skirts, dresses and even evening wear. Blouses were tailored with standing collars and a ruffle at the top and sleeves gathered and puffed. Ferrile patterns and knitted pictures appeared on sweaters in the mid-80s. T-shirts and tops. Some t-shirts and knit tops were made to fit tightly. With the promotion of fitness, running suits, warm-up suits and jogging suits and exercise suits were worn as casual streetwear as well as for exercising. A new bathing suit style with a high cut, inverted V at the sides over the hip, the cut, almost reaching to the waistline, became popular. Skiing suits for recreational skiers were inspired from Olympic skiing costumes, but were more fashion-centered. By the late 80s, there was a preference for pastel colors and later still, a retro revival. Both long, full, curly hair and frizzy curly hair in both long and shorter lengths continued. By the mid-80s, shorter hair was seen more often. The 90s saw the return to popularity of long straight hair. Hats were very popular. Headbands, hair bows, scarves, small elastic bands with ribbons or fabric decorations. Sleepwear consisted of all-in-one sleepers to frilly feminine nightgowns in fabrics ranging from silk to brushed nylon tricot. Long and short t-shirts were also worn as night shirts. Robes included fleece styles velour knits and quilted styles. Pantyhose were opaque and sheer. Some were patterned while others were beaded, sequined or applied with other decorations. By the mid-90s, opaque stockings without texture or pattern were fashionable. As skirts grew shorter, lower heel shoes were worn. Sneakers of all kinds were worn in the 80s for, support, for sport and leisure. A lot of styles were revived from the previous decades, including the wedge or large square heels, stiletto heels and two-tone spectator-style shoes in black and white. Thigh-high and hiking boots also became popular. Younger people, especially the punks and skinheads, wore Doc Martin lace-up boots. The 80s look featured more obvious makeup with darker lips and a darker outline. To get the pout, many models and other women would get silicone injected into their lips. Pale skin was a preferred to tan, maybe in connection to sun exposure causing skin cancer. Fingernail polish came in a variety of colors. 
a fad for colouring each nail a different colour was followed by some women. A variety of hair care products were required to maintain the fashionable tousled hairstyles. Street fashion focused on tattooing, body piercing for the attachment of ornaments. Some people preferred a not-so-permanent clip-on solution. Thank you.